Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Better Than Success Real Estate League live real estate news briefing show. I am so excited to be here. I'm your host, Nicole Purvey, and we're going to start this show off out with something that is very sad. It's a very sad day in the world when I, Nicole Purvey, have to admit when I was wrong. I know, I know you all want to cry. You want to cry. I want to cry. We all want to cry. I was wrong. It's okay. Okay. What was I wrong about? I was wrong, but I wasn't really. Okay. So what was I wrong about? Last week, we had the Fed decision come down about interest rates right on the heels of the big start of these banking collapses. Okay. And the Fed made a decision to increase interest rates by 25 bits. I predicted that they weren't going to do anything. Now, this is why I was wrong because I greatly underestimated how much of a thug, <laughs> how much of a gangster the Fed is. They are complete gangsters. They got my respect. They are complete gangsters. Now, I was wrong because I made the wrong prediction. I said they were going to say it. They were going to not change rates. They increased them to increase them by 25 bits. Okay. Why was I not 100% wrong? I was not 100% wrong because um, everything else is that I predicted is happening. Okay. Credit markets are starting to tighten up as we're going to see in these articles that we're going to cover today. And things are just Everything that I said to prepare yourself for right now is all happening. So, yeah, I don't feel bad. Also, too, the other thing I said was I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, usually a lot of times I, when I make predictions, I'm very, very confident. But I did say that no one knows what's going to happen because we've never seen this before. So I did give myself a little bit of an asterisk. So just want to say that. Welcome, 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 everyone, as you guys are pulling up into the show. I'm super excited to be here. Um, without further ado, let's get right into the most important real estate news story that you guys need to know about as real estate investors for this week. Let's get into it. Commercial real estate is in trouble. Why you should be paying attention. According to CNN, economists are becoming increasingly worried about the commercial real estate industry, which is worth a staggering $20 trillion. This industry has experienced significant growth in recent decades thanks to low interest rates and easy access to credit. However, things have taken a turn for the worse. Since COVID-19, the value of office and retail properties has been declining due to lower occupancy rates and changes in people's work and shopping habits. Additionally, the Federal Reserve's attempts to combat inflation by by raising interest rates have hurt the credit dependent commercial real estate industry. The recent strain on the banking system is also expected to exacerbate the industry's problem. Small and mid-sized banks, which are primarily lenders to commercial real estate developers and managers are facing significant liquidity pressure. In fact, according to Goldman Sachs economists, about 80% of all bank loans for commercial properties come from regional banks. Economists over at Goldman Sachs believe that the banks will begin to back away from making commitments to the commercial real estate industry more rapidly in a world where they are more focused on liquidity. This is an issue to watch in the coming months and quarters. Recent trends indicate that short sellers or people who bet on stocks price to fall are increasingly betting against commercial landlords. This suggests that they believe the market will continue to decline as regional banks limit access to credit. According to S&P Global, real estate is the most shorted industry globally and the third most shorted in the United States. <laughs> Okay, so this article is really, really, really important that you guys need to know about. Um, the, it's finally happened. I told you that the credit markets were going to create freeze up. Now, a couple of important things to note is that this article, as they're talking about commercial real estate, they're talking about larger deals, but it does apply to you, small real estate investors. So you guys don't consider yourself commercial real estate investors, but you actually are. When you are not buying for retail purposes, for to be a owner occupied, that is con considered commercial real estate. 
a lot of you guys are doing the birth strategy or you're buying holding and your banks more the bank mortgages are coming from small local banks like this article said 80 percent of banks fund commercial real estate deals the types of deals that you do if it's not owner occupied most of the bank most of the mortgages are commercial mortgages and they're coming from small banks what does this mean these banks are increasing their liquidity requirements so they are going to be a little more stringent which i told you guys all from the door now the good thing about well i want to say there's nothing good about this but how do you protect yourself and how do you make it so that you are okay as a real estate investor make sure you keep your credit high make sure you practice all sorts of due diligence when doing your deals and you establish relationships with these local banks are they going to stop lending altogether no this is what makes the economy go round but you want to make sure that your deals are properly vetted you want to make sure that you are keeping your credit straight nothing coming between you and getting to that closing table nothing to super alarm yourself about right now i'm not saying don't alarm yourself about it in the future but i'm saying right now just make sure that your game is airtight told y'all all this months ago okay months 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 ago so yes make sure you keep an eye out about that before we get into our next story i do have um, a couple of announcements uh, a couple of announcements i have are don't forget our group coaching and accountability calls for April, for the month of April, for our members only are April 3rd, 14th, 17th, and 28th at 7 p.m. For you members who need extra handholding, make sure you are in attendance at those times. Our deal analysis lab and tutoring every Tuesday at one o'clock. Uh, don't forget our, about our masterminds every Wednesday at seven o'clock. And we have a new members class coming up on April 27th. And members, Real Estate CEO School is starting in May. If you DM me in our group chat or you email Irish or me, doesn't matter. If you email me, I may or may not have a discount code. Now, is it going to be the 50% off that I had, the special, the flash sale I had last week? No, but <laughs> it will be a good discount. Just email me if you're down to join this private mastermind session where I'm going to be coaching people how to leave their jobs in a year. This is for serious people who are just headed up to here with their jobs and they are trying to leave their jobs and replace their income with a real estate associated revenue activity within a year. And non-members, our construction management class, this is for members as well, but anyone can attend this. Our construction management class, we only do this class twice per year, April 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th at noon Eastern time every day, every Saturday, the last four Saturdays in April. So we only do this class twice a year. It's our construction management class. All right, let's go to the next story. FHFA announces timeline to sunset FICO Classic credit model. According to HousingWire.com, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, FHFA, has announced its plan for when Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will use new credit score models, FICO 10T and Vantage Score 4.0. The FHFA also plans to transition from three credit reports to two within a year. By the fourth quarter of 2025, the FHFA will have incorporated credit score model updates into capital and pricing. The new credit modeling means that rent, utilities, and telecom payments will also be included in payment histories for borrowers. However, some stakeholders are concerned about FICO's pricing changes. The National Consumer Reporting Agency sent a letter to its members saying the mortgage lenders would see price increases of 10% to 400% from FICO. FICO said that its pricing remains low compared to the value it provides in facilitating approximately $2 trillion in mortgage originations every year. So this is important to know, you guys. This has been coming down the pipeline for quite some time. 
FHFA just basically said, hey, for mortgages, for residential mortgages, we are going to do credit calculation totally different. We're going to use the FICO 10T and the Vantage score 4.0. We're going to use those two scores. These two scores factor in your utility payments and I think rent and your phone payments. So you get good credit for making on-time payments for those things, right? So a lot of people, they can't qualify to buy houses because maybe they don't have a lot of credit or you know they don't really understand the credit game, but they've been paying their utility bills on time for years and years and years. And so this is FHFA's response to that. Why is this important to you as an investor? One, you may go and buy a house soon. So for yourself, right? You may buy a house, not at a, an investment property. So you just need to know that as well, because buying your home is part of your net worth as well, right? That's how most people build their net worth. But also too, if you're flipping homes, you want to keep this in mind because you need to know what your buyers are up against. You want to know what is on their mind, what's happening on the other end of that closing table so you can properly position yourself to make sure that you exit your deals as effectively as possible. So this is, this is a big, 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 big change. Will it affect you, especially someone like me? I'm a Burr investor. I'm only doing Burr deals. Will this affect me a whole lot? No, but it is something that you need to know about as a real estate investor, okay? As you guys are coming in here, why don't y'all say what's up in the chat? What's up? What's up? What's up? I love you all. Um, let me know where you're looking to invest. I just need to know who's in the room. Just say hello to me. I appreciate you all for showing up in here. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind about this big change. Also too, this is something else important. This will just be the first snowball. Other banks, lenders, lending requirements, they're going to start looking at these scores as well. This is the FICO 10T and the Vantage score 4.0. So for those of you who monitor your credit like me, like I'm obsessive about monitoring my credit. Now I need to know what these other scores are as well. Um, for some of you who make sure you pay all your stuff on time that reports and you don't, you know, maybe you pay your water bill every other month or you pay your gas bill every other month, you know, you get both months. Like me sometimes. <laughs> you can't do that no more. You got to pay everything on time. If you want to make sure that you keep a pristine credit score and this is starting next year. What's up, Tara? What's up, Ty Ty? Hey, Quentin, how are you guys? I miss your names. I say I miss your faces, but I miss your name. I miss your name. What's up, you guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? Appreciate you guys for tapping in. What's up, Delight? It's a blessing and a curse. It is a blessing and a curse. I was, I, I was, as I was preparing this, I was trying to figure out a strong statement to say about it, whether I liked it or I didn't like it, but honestly, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, what I think really honestly, it's not like they're saying, hey, you know, we want to be all inclusive and we will make it fair to everyone. No, what I think is happening is this is just a better way. They feel like they can manage their risk better, right? Like once they get to know, they, at the end of the day, they want to know everything about you and they want to be able to price it into your mortgage. And so if they can tap into that other information. They want to know everything about you, period, point blank. That's it. And once they know more information about you, they can manage their risk better. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you all. What's up, G peoples? What's up, Gloria? Gladys. I'm going to say Gloria. Who the heck is Gloria? I don't know. What's up, Gladys? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, everyone say what's up to my mom. She said it's about time they're changing FICO. Not sure if the scores will be more accurate, though. I mean, accuracy is rel rel relative, um, especially when it comes to something like this. It's all subjective. Like, OK, here's your credit worthiness. Sure. <laughs> what's up, Dan? How you doing? How you doing? How are you doing? At the end of the day, like, I'm glad you pointed it out. Accurate. It's all relatives. They just want to know. They want to put a number to you as a person, right? 
there is no way you can quantify me as a person, but what I can do is know how the game is played and do what I can best, the best I can to manipulate that number. And the best way to know how the game is played is know how the, know what's coming down the pipeline, right? Like some people's going to get hit over the head. I guarantee y'all, if I can fast forward to a year when this light goes on with this thing, people are going to be like, oh my God, they didn't warn us. Things are changing. We didn't know. And we're me and you, y'all, we sit here like they put the news out two years prior. Prior, they put it out because I've been seeing articles about this for a while, and it just don't. It makes it to our BTS, our members only newsletter, but it doesn't make it to this show because I only pick the most articles that I can talk the most trash about and put it on this show. So I've been they've been talking about this for a while, okay, and so. At the end of the day, that's that's really what it's all about. Thank you, Dan. Dan giving out super stickers over here. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad it said LOL because we called it Gloria. I will never do that again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. What's up, Marvin? Oh my God, you look good. You're smart. You're blessed. You know what? Thank you, Marvin. I appreciate it. I appreciate that comment. I am so blessed. Y'all have no idea. By the way, um, I am, I was a little late today, a lot late today, because I had to push my entire day back because I'm speaking at a conference, a virtual conference. MG, the mortgage guy, if you'll go to his Instagram page, don't click off of this. <laughs> if you'll go to his Instagram page, y'all can y'all can buy a ticket. It's a woman in real estate conference, and I'm gonna be doing a hour-long construction management lecture. And so I had to push my whole day back. Um, had my nanny coming at noon as opposed to nine so that she can be here for the nighttime festivities. So I still just to say I'm very, 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 very blessed. All right. Let's get into the next article. As the housing market remains tight, experts say real estate fraud has spiked in the U.S., According to businessinsider.com, real estate fraud has been on the rise. Mark Berman, an attorney who often deals with real estate fraud cases, said that victims of fraud are often very upset when they contact him. Many of them were close to finalizing a property deal when they received an email or text that looked legitimate, asking them to wire money to close the deal. Later, they realized the request was made by a fraudster who is part of a wave of similar scams taking advantage of the tight real estate market conditions. Home buyers, sellers, and brokers are often trying to close deals as fast as possible, which can make them vulnerable to scammers. The risk for property fraud, where a seller misrepresents information about a house on the market, has increased 23% from the year prior, according to analytics from CoreLogic. Wire fraud and title fraud have also increased. Data from Funding Shield shows that transactions Actions were wired and title fraud were a risk factor reached an all-time high in the fourth quarter of 2022, with over half of all transactions bearing potential signs of fraud risk. Real estate fraud cases have gone up exponentially in recent years, according to Berman. Scammers have become very sophisticated and even industry professionals have fallen for their clever schemes. Some scams are so darn good, Berman said. Scams are often getting very sophisticated and real estate agents, brokers, they're not keeping up. Okay, this is something y'all need to know about. Did y'all hear what I said in that article? Half of all transactions right now have signs of potential fraud. That's wild. Okay, and also I want to break down the main scam that they were talking about. Let's say you're buying a home, right? I've heard about this happening to people. Let's say you're buying a property, right? You've been going back and forth with the title company, going back and forth with the seller, the wholesaler, everybody, all that. And then you get an email out of nowhere because y'all know, for those of you who have closed deals, y'all know how hectic it can be in those days leading up. I need this. I need a prick of your blood. I, like, you're just like, what? Why didn't y'all know this a month ago? Like, this is, is this new to y'all? Like, why are y'all doing all this? So anyways, you get a whole bunch of emails leading up to the transaction. Everyone needs all this random stuff. And so you get an email from the title company. Looks like the title company that says, hey, we need you to wire a couple extra dollars right now. And then they go and wire the money. 
And guess what? <laughs> it was a fraud. So now your money that you saved at the buy this home, you can't go to the closing table with it no more. Okay. Or so that's wire fraud. That's one form of wire fraud or title fraud. I've heard about this happening a lot. I can tell y'all stories, but it would incriminate people. Well, not that people did I know were the villains in this story, but like, I'm not trying to expose anybody's business. And some of these stories are very, very specific. So I can't get into them, but essentially the gist of that type of fraud is Someone will sell a home, forge some stuff on the deed, forge the paperwork, sell a home that they do not own or they do not have the right to sell. Go to the closing table and everything. The buyer buys the property, starts fixing it up. <laughs> Next thing you know, cousin from North Carolina is like, this is my house. <laughs> I ain't sell this house. More of the story is, be on your P's and Q's right now, guys, because of the barrier to entry has raised. And this is what I have said to you guys over and over and over again about right now. Historically, the barrier to entry to get in real estate has been really, really low. But right now, the barriers to entry are raising. And so wire fraud is on the loose. Tara, shout out to Tara for donating two dollars to the Nicole Purvy Hat Fund. <laughs> thank you Tara Tara's my girl I can't wait to be me in person by the way Tara that is my whole entire friend in real life on the internet <laughs> crazy 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 right S represents these drones is wild all right my mom um posted the information for the um the virtual summit here's the link right here if you want to pull up the, I'm going on at 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's what I'm going on. Okay. All right. Really quickly, before we get into this next story, I have something I want to share with you guys. Um, and if y'all have any questions, please let me know in the chat. I love talking trash with y'all. I love answering your questions. That's why I do this show live. And I just be forgetting sometimes to remind y'all that I'm here to answer your questions. This is not, it is the Nicole Purvy show, but it's not. It's really for y'all. OK, um, so just want to remind members to go back and watch last week's mastermind. It's in the back office. Here are some highlights. Um, it was about the title was Acquiring Properties Through Recent Real Estate Trends with John Good. Here are some takeaways. One of the successful strategies in acquiring properties is buying various types of properties in states whenever possible, as long as the numbers in your investigation make sense. Y'all know I'm big on out of town investing. You have to diversify your portfolio, especially if you are going to be buying multiple properties and you really plan on doing this thing. You got to diversify your portfolio. Um, number two, having a property management company in place is way to go, handling particular unanticipated issues that require you to be fully engaged in them. So by the way, in Philly, I just started a property management company. If you have any properties that you want to pass off to your girl, me and my partner, I'm only doing it for friends and family. If you watch this show, you are considered friends and family. Um, the other next thing is the biggest thing when you get involved in a project is time. Time is crucial. Time is money. You have to move as swiftly as possible for therefore experience and seasoned professionals in place in terms of your property acquisition. And last but not least, Oh, you know, I got two more things. In regards to developing ground up residential, the property should be classified to a certain zip code. Check different areas as they come along with different opportunities. And that way you can adjust your strategy by staying up to date on the area's current demands. OK, so basically, hey, if you're doing ground up, you should only be in a, a certain zip code because there's so many different variables. From neighborhood to neighborhood with ground up construction. So you should be identifying a certain zip code and only doing ground up in that zip code. And last but not least, in skip tracing and investigation, investigating certain areas have different situations and there are various sites you can pay for a reasonable price. You can go to Lexus Nessus, Municipal Searches, Ancestry.com and other searches that can give you more of a profile on the property. For all you people out there that like to find your own deals, that is the way to go. If I had time, I would, I would, I would, I would. 
All right. All right, guys, let me know if you got any questions in the chat. If not, I will move on to this next story. America's hottest rental markets at the start of 2023, North Jersey overtakes Miami as competition builds up in the Northeast. According to RentCafe.com, a combination of factors including rapid inflation, interest rate hikes, high home prices, and increased cost of living are pushing many renters to reconsider their housing options. So as the new year unfolded, many were seeking better living situations within their budget. Of course, the warm business-friendly Sunbelt states have long been highly coveted renting spots, particularly during the pandemic. However, the start of 2023 saw a pivot to markets located in the Northeast. As a result, eight of the country's top 20 hottest renting spots are in the Northeast. Aspiring home buyers continue to rent in North Jersey while enjoying relatively affordable cost of living for the tri-state area. Accordingly, North Jersey became the hottest renting spot in the country at the beginning of 2023. But what were the most in-demand renting spots at the start of 2023? To rank the nation's most competitive rental markets, RentCafe.com analyzed 134 largest rental markets in the U.S. where data was available. For this, they looked at the most revealing metrics when it came to competitivity, including the number of days apartments were vacant, the percentage of apartments that were occupied by renters, the number of prospective renters competing for an apartment, the percentage of renters who renew their leases, the share of new apartments completed. Here are the top 20 most competitive rental markets at the start of 2023. Number one, North Jersey. Number two, Miami-Dade County, Florida. Number three, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Number four, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Number five, Omaha, Nebraska. Number six, Southwest Florida, number seven, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, number eight, Broward County, Florida, number nine, Orlando, Florida, number 10, suburban Chicago, Illinois, number 11, Orange County, California, number 12, Central Jersey, New Jersey, 13, San Diego, California, 14, Brooklyn, New York, 15, suburban Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 16, Bridgeport, New Haven, Connecticut, 17, Kansas City, 18, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 19, Greater Boston, Massachusetts, 20, Eastern Los Angeles County, California. All right, everyone. Okay, so this is important, right? I love how, one of the things that I love about this show is we get to look at all the articles, right? And we see a good balance of doom and gloom and good news, right? At the end of the day, you know, Everyone's saying real estate, real estate is doing this and doing that. But at the end of the day, people always need a place to live. They always need a place to rent. And shout out to Jersey. Who's investing in Jersey? Shout out to Jersey for being a strong rental market. I've always shot away from Jersey because of the high property taxes, but people live there. <laughs> it's got to make sense for the landlords. And it's making more sense right now because that's the hottest place to live, specifically northern Jersey and central Jersey. Doesn't say southern Jersey doesn't count because number 15 on the list was Philly, the suburban areas of Philly, outside of Philly. And guess what is in this outside of Philly? Southern Jersey. So these are very strong rental markets. Other thing to note, we got a lot of Philly investors in here. Philly suburban markets made the list not philly itself you want to there are probably a lot of reasons why this is the case but i'm sure it has direct and indirect reasons related to politics <laughs> okay which also surprised me because a lot of suburban areas right outside of philly have high property taxes also but it's still a strong rental market because um safety is important right but the numbers is making sense. So I want you guys to think about that. Here, I'm going to show you guys the list of cities. Um, I think, should I post? I'm going to show you guys the list of cities so you can see it visually. Um, here, let me show it to you. Okay, y'all see the cities? I can't see y'all, but I'm hoping y'all look. North Jersey, Miami, Harrisburg, which we know some investors. We got um, a couple of BTS members that invest in Harrisburg. 
I didn't know that the rental market was that strong. And you know what? They actually, I'm thinking about it, they actually been trying to tell me for a minute. <laughs> Florida, y'all know everyone loves Florida. Florida's top in the list as well. And you see number 15, suburban Philadelphia. And then you got Pittsburgh down there as well. But at the end of the day, Northeast is top in the list. Northeast is top in the list. Period, point blank. Keep running it up, Philly. <laughs> Keep running it up. Jer Jersey, shout out who's investing in Jersey. Let me know in the chat. Okay, so we have a question. S represents. Just got my license to sell home in Arizona. Haven't picked a brokerage yet. Any suggestions? So, um, I don't know anything about Arizona in terms of like me having connections and like really knowing the market, but I will say that if I had to choose a national brokerage, I would say Keller Williams. They do a great deal of training. All the top agents that I know are agents at Keller Williams. They do a lot of hands-on training. They really invest in their agents. But is th does that mean that there isn't some local shining star that's killing it in Arizona? No. I just don't have no connection in Arizona for me to tell you, like, this is where you need to go. Anybody in Arizona want to shout out to S Represents? And y'all will say, hey, come over to my agent, my brokerage. Hit him up. Let him know. I'm only saying him because I think this, you look like a man in this picture. It's a very shadowy. Please um, excuse me if I'm wrong. <laughs> And the list of cities, my mom just said the list of cities will be in the description. Yeah, um, Keller Williams is like the bomb. And congratulations, by the way, on getting your license. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, everyone, I'm not going to drag this out. I do want to tell you all that go to this link, go to Matt's page on Instagram um, to get access to the class that I'm going to be teaching later on tonight. I think the tickets are relatively inexpensive. Um, I go on in approximately two hours and I have to clean up my presentation. So I have to go. <laughs> um, and everyone, members, don't forget, y'all got a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, make sure you stay plugged in. It is in direct correlation to your success. So make sure you stay plugged in. You come to the accountability calls, deal hunting, and all that good stuff. Construction management class is coming up. We only do this class twice a year. I don't want to hear when we in between classes or if we don't do it later this year. There is no guarantee that we're going to do it later this year. This is the beautiful thing about being an entrepreneur. I could do what I want. Julia is about to be developed. Julia is currently developing. That's who's doing the class with me. Sorry. Let me give you all some context. The person doing the class with me is Julia. She's currently developing a hotel. She might not care about us in October. <laughs> in the fall when we usually run this class back again. Okay. So I need y'all to keep that in mind. We don't always do this class. It is a complete game changer. I want you to go to the page. If you don't believe me, see what people have to say. Every time we do this class it's changed so many people's lives. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart gives people the confidence to go and do the deals and be able to have educated conversations with these contractors. Tara, pull up to the class. There is a discount for BTS member. Just ask Irish for a 50% off discount code. Okay. Thank you, Marvin. I appreciate you. And everyone sign up for the class. I'm going to see y'all soon. I will see y'all here next week. I will be at the normal time because I don't have a class. I don't have to teach anything. So I don't have to push my day back. Okay. I love you all and have a great day. And Let's get free. <laughs> Let's get free. Let's get free. This is all about freedom, freeing your mind, freeing your pockets, freeing your time, freeing your space, freeing your energy, freeing your family. I appreciate you all. I love y'all. I want you to have a great night.